Nine things I wish I knew as a beginner cyclist. The first one is speed means absolutely nothing. It's an okay metric to use if you are doing the exact same loop in the exact same weather conditions. It can be kind of useful to know if your fitness is improving. However, for the majority of your rides, it is not a good metric to use because it's not taking into account headwind, tailwind, whether you're going up or downhill. I know so many riders that have been riding for years and still stress about speed, but actually it doesn't really mean anything. So don't get too stressed about speed. Second one, you are capable of way, way more than you think you are capable of. So this is absolutely from experience because when I first started riding, I was so cautious and didn't have much confidence on the bike because I'd come from a running background. However, all the longer rides that I did and planned, I did them. Even though they felt like I wouldn't be able to do them, I completed them. And I think the thing is, you don't know what your limit is until you do them. So get stuck in, sign up for events, plan some longer rides because you 100% can do more than what you think you're capable of. I think we're always a little bit too cautious. So just get out there, get stuck in and enjoy it. Number three is get a good quality pair of bib shorts. So I know Lycra, is quite intimidating if you're new to cycling, but it does make a lot of difference to comfort than just wearing regular shorts uh, because there's a chamois in there which has got extra padding. So it just makes your ride so, so much more comfortable. And if you invest in any piece of cycling kit, I would say bib shorts. You can get away with cheaper jerseys, like cheaper shoes even, all the things that are like for the bike, but bib shorts, I would invest the most you can into a nice pair. Oh, that's a really bad banana. Make sure you are eating on rides. So my favorite things to eat are bananas and dates. And even if you're gonna go out for half an hour, just make sure you eat before you go and take a little snack with you during the ride. It doesn't have to be like expensive energy bars, energy gels, like you don't have to get into like the cycling nutrition hype. You don't. Just take whatever foods you like, whether that's sweets, sweets are my all time favorite to have on rides. My favorite ones are the little Henry Hippos or the M&S Percy Pigs. Just eat what you would normally eat every day and just take it with you on the bike. Always have enough snacks and enough fuel because if you don't, it's just not that fun. So make sure you are eating enough on your rides. Next thing is hydration and in particular, electrolytes. For years, I thought electrolytes were a bit of a scam, didn't use them. And then I couldn't understand that why on like super hot days or really long rides, I would get back and have a really bad headache. And it's because I wasn't replacing all the salts and minerals and things that you get from using electrolytes. So buy electrolytes, use them, drink regularly, eat before you're thirsty, drink before, no, eat before you're hungry, drink before you're thirsty on rides. Top tip. If you are wanting to dip your literal toes into the world of clipless shoes and pedals, then I would say go for mountain bike pedals and cleats before road pedals and cleats. So if you don't know what they are, so clipless pedals are basically a way for your shoe to clip into your pedal just to give you more efficiency on the bike. I don't like riding without um, being clipped in now, although I remember it being very, very scary when I first started. And there's a video on YouTube, I'll leave a link to it below when I actually first started learning how to use them. That was about nine years ago. I'll leave that below. But the main difference, road, so you can see it protrudes out, mountain bike, excuse that shoe, it is very worn. Um, but you can walk around in mountain bike cleats as well. The other benefit of having mountain bike cleats rather than road cleats are, well, is that there's more flow, so you're not as rigid in your shoe. And also it's, it's a lot easier to unclip. So I would say if you are wanting to try clipper shoes, try mountain bike first. I still use mountain bike um, cleats on my road bike, so you don't have to use road on road, just do whatever is most comfortable for you. Next tip, and this is about your, I guess, progression at getting better as a cyclist, and that is join a club. Because your local club has got so much knowledge, information, and can teach you so many things. So learning how to ride in a group, just taking you on different routes that you might not go on, and the support and encouragement that you get from being in a group, I just think is gonna improve your cycling just tenfold compared to if you're just riding on your own. So yeah, find your local club. They do generally have like introductory rides so you can see, you know, if, if it's a nice fit, if you like the people, but generally most bike clubs that I've been to are just full of really nice, encouraging people that wanna just do fun things and ride bikes. So definitely try out your local club. Join Strava. I've been on Strava almost for as long as I have been cycling. And I just think it is an amazing app 
website for community because you just connect with so many different people all over the world if you are into running into cycling there's so many different things you can activities that you can load on there uh, but for me i just like using it as like a diary for all my rides so you can upload pictures you can upload videos you can also plan routes i think that is in the paid for version now and um, but you can also explore as well so you can find routes you can find segments so you can find specific climbs depending on how steep or like flat you want them to be i just it's just such a great resource and i think it really encouraged my cycling because i was able to explore because i moved um somewhere new i didn't know where to ride and i just saw like all these different segments i could go and do and create a route around those segments so it's been a massive massive part of my cycling journey and not an advert for strava but i do love it and i think you'll like it too so yeah go and have a look if you want to follow me i'm katie cookaburra on strava and number nine which is i think the most important one of all of these and that is learn how to fix a flat tire and do some other basic mechanics at home first practice it do it a million times so that you are confident that you can do it out on the road i did not do this i, I did it once at home and i was like i'll be fine and then i was on my way to work in the rain in adelaide i got a flat and i couldn't fix it and I, it just was awful it was raining just, just learn from my mistake, do it at home first and just get used to be able to do it so that when you're out on the road, you're like a pro at it. So I'll leave actually a link to a video that I've done on basic mechanics that you, you'll be able to learn to do. I'll leave that below. And that is all of the tips. Thank you so much. Any questions, leave them below. And also I'll leave a link to a playlist that I've done, which is called Cycling for Beginners. Um, cycling made simple, basically. So it's just everything that you need to know if you are a beginner. I'll leave that link below. Thank you so much. See you next video.